and those that are graduating from college. And I'm going to ask my sister, Abby, to come up and facilitate that. Honor her as she comes, please. <laughs> Amen. Take it away. If I could have all of the graduates come up, um, we have some high school graduates, I have a couple college grads, I want you guys to come down as well. And then if you are a current youth leader, I'm going to have you stand right down here, Ella. If you are a current youth leader, or if you are one of our pastors, Pastor Mickey, Pastor Paul, Pastor Cheryl, Pastor Josh, I'm going to have you come up and we're going to pray for these guys one by one. Um, congregation, Please um, support us in prayer. If the Lord gives you a word for one of these graduates, I encourage you to write it down and share it with them after the service. Okay? Um, yes, please go to Kids Church. Nate, Logan. So um, I want to I start with Ella, um, praying for the service throughout the week. Um, the Lord started to give me words for, for people that I wanted to share, and I know the pastors will have words for you guys as well. Um, but I just, I, I want to be faithful to share those words for sure. And so I want to start with Ella. And Ella, as I was praying for you this week, I saw... The story of Miriam in you, and Miriam was a worshiper, and she was also a prophetess, but she was a worshiper, and she went ahead in battle singing and praising, and I saw Miriam in you. You're going forward, and you're worshiping, and you're making way for, the God, for God's army to do things, and, and he also brought to mind so many Bible characters, and I thought of uh, Sarah, who said, God, you can't use me. I am too old, and I thought of Moses, who said, God, you can't use me. I'm slow in speech, and God wants to use you. God wants to use you, and there is no excuse. There is no... Um, lie told against you that will prosper against his calling in your life to use you in a mighty, mighty way. And so, God, I thank you for Ella, and I thank you for the calling that you have on her life. I thank you that you're bigger than any lie that is ever told to us. I thank you that you are bigger than any insecurity that we might carry. I thank you that you are big, and you can do big things in each and every one of us, no matter what walk we are walking, no matter how old we are, no matter what um, issue we might be battling, God, you still want to use us to further your kingdom. Anyone else wants to, has a word for Ella? I'm just getting the word beautiful. <laughs> you are so beautiful. And, and the Lord would just say, there's just a confidence that he's bringing you, a holy boldness that he's bringing you. It's from him. You don't have to earn it. You're just receiving it. You already have in so many ways, Ella. But God is just pouring out more. And there's just a supernatural way that he wants to outstretch his arm, his hand of power and authority through you. Don't look to the left or the right. You just be you, who God created you to be. And you're going to see some amazing things. I just, I feel, I just to impart to you a, an anointing of healing. Any gift that I have with laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover, in Jesus' name, I just anoint your hands to heal. Lay hands on the sick, those people that burden your heart, that, that you have such compassion for, because you have a heart full of compassion directly from the throne of heaven. That compassion would just move these hands to lay hands on the sick and see their bodies made well but their hearts made whole. In Jesus' name, you're beautiful. Yeah. Bless you, Ella. Uh, next one I had was Luke. I know I'm not in order of how people are standing, but I'm just in order of how God spoke to me. So um, I was praying for you, and... He, the Lord took me to Judges 3, and I thought, 
much. I don't know. So it's so weird. <laughs> and <laughs> Judges 3 has like these background characters that we don't really think about or, or talk about as much. And there's one whose name is Ehud, and, and I totally suggest reading Judges 3 because it's a hoot, honestly. And he killed an evil king in a very bizarre way. But these background characters were important enough to be in the story, to be part of the Bible. And God is calling you forth, okay? He's saying, you might not be front and center in your eyes. You might not be front and center in someone else's eyes, but you're front and center in my eyes, and you're important, and you are important, and I'm going to use you. Your story is important. It doesn't matter if you think your story is just a random thing. It doesn't matter if you think your story is, a, is background noise. God is going to use you and use your special story, okay? And he gave me something else for you. Um, that you would bring support. So he reminded me of Jethro, and we we don't hear tons about Jethro, but Jethro actually imparted great wisdom to Moses in order to appoint leadership, okay? You're going to bring support. You're going to bring healing and wisdom to those around you. And so in Jesus' name, I just, I just thank you for that word, and I, and I just pray it for Luke. God, I, I just pray for wisdom. God, I pray for the gift of healing, Jesus, and I, and I thank you that that wisdom is going to bring support to his church, to his family, to his friends, God. I yep. thank you that he's that support person that people can count on and that his story is so important and his story is going to be used in a big, big way. And, and people might pass by that story real quick, but they're going to come back to it and God's going to bring it to their mind. I must have read the story in Judges 3 a thousand times and maybe I didn't notice that at first, but then God said, read Judges 3 because it is for Luke. And so it is important, and you are important, and your story is going to be used in a great way. I also received two pictures for you, Luke, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, one picture was of God allowing you to kind of tunnel like a groundhog, kind of like uh, up, on the, up on the world there was like confusion and not knowing where people were going, and, but you were allowed to just tunnel straight to where you were supposed to be. Like, you, you kind of pop up, and you're right where you're supposed to be. Like, it's skipping all that confusion. Um, and so I, I give that to you, and we prophesy that over you. I also um, got the picture of you kind of feeling like you had to, like, crawl up a rope, you know, like, hand over hand, except you were free-falling down the rope. But there's a knot at the bottom. So you're free-falling, and you just stop because the knot, the knot catches you. The knot is Jesus and God. And so instead of you pulling yourself up, you fall to the bottom, you're hung onto that rope, and he pulls that rope up so that he's got you. You don't do it in your own strength. You're hanging on. You're, you can't fall past that rope. Like, you're, you're not going to just free fall. So you've got two hands on that rope. He's got you, and he's going to be doing the work. Like, you just hang on, and he pulls you right up the cliff. So those are the two things I got for you. God bless you, Luke. We love you. But what the Lord's showing me is that you're a person that people can talk to, and they bear their souls to you. And God says that you're a man who stands in the gap for those people, the broken people, friends who uh, don't really know their way out. And he puts a word in your heart for them. I have like the, those three. Do you want four? You can. Okay. Hi. <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not scary anymore. I really am not. Okay. <laughs> um, so... I'm just, I know you guys, and um, the thing the Lord wants spoken over you is this. Today, the Lord wants to acknowledge your heritage. Your, your salvation was not only fought for, 
by Jesus, but it was fought for by your parents. Your parents have stood in the gap and will continue to stand in the gap for you. The other side of that is you will have a legacy. You will have a legacy, not just, I'm a heller. <laughs> That's my dad's Mark. My, you know, my mom's Aaron. You know, it's not just about the flesh stuff that your parents are, but it's about the spiritual legacy. It's a spiritual legacy is so much more important than anything in the flesh. And uh, I saw your face, Jake, and God said, I will withhold no good thing from you. As you walk uprightly before me, God will withhold no good thing from you. Nothing. You walk with him, he's gonna, you're going to get blessed. Am I going to get blessed? Yes, you're going to get blessed. <laughs> You never, ever, ever have to take a back seat. You are your own man in Christ, Nate. You are not like, oh, well, you know, I'm the middle, middle child, so I'm Jake's brother and Luke's big brother. You are your own man in Christ. He wants you to know that the gifts he has for you, you will have influence. You will have influence. You will have a choice to influence for God or influence for yourself. And if you choose to influence for God, it'll be great because that's the spirit. You want to go after the spirit. And uh, there's a great future for you. Hi, Luke. Yeah. Um, just want to say really proud of all of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I could say the same thing to you that I just said to him. It's when you're the baby of the family. I know about being the baby of the family. When you're the baby of the family, it's like my older brother, my older brother, my older brother, my older brother. Um, but you have your own manhood in Christ. And everything that our sister prayed over you, spoke over you, and Brittany, yes. Yes and amen. And your paths will all be for Christ, but they won't look the same because of the calling on each of your lives. And, 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 and I'm not calling you into ministry, so don't get nervous. <laughs> that, that, no, no, I am not not calling you either. But we leave that to the Father in another day, okay? I bless you in the name of Jesus. when you link your arms in unity, there's nothing that God will not do through the three of you for your family yes. as you stand in the gap for your family, for your friends, for um, whatever the situation is. But when the three of you stand together um, in unity, in Christ, you are a fortress that nothing can penetrate. Yeah. And uh, just uh, a, a word over all of the youth, the scripture that came to mind this morning in the prayer room was um, when Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gifts that are in you. He's telling Timothy to stir the gifts up. We sometimes pray, Holy Spirit, stir those gifts in me. But Paul is telling Timothy, you do the work. You stir it up. You exercise your faith mm -hmm. because God has put gifts in each and every one of you. And it's your responsibility to stir it up and use it. Um, I honestly had you guys as last, but I'm going to skip down this way now because we're kind of there. So I'm glad that Pastor Cheryl um, prayed for you just now because I honestly never know who is who. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know Luke. 
Luke is awesome. You guys are awesome, but I don't never know which one is which. So I think, yes. I'm, and I'm glad she also said that you're the middle because I always wondered who was older. So now I know. And <laughs> as I was praying for you guys this week, without having a face to pray for, Jake, um, God gave me Psalms 34, and I just encourage you to read that chapter. And in it, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And God wants to show you his goodness in a new way. Okay, I also, I don't know why, but he gave me the word peace. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for your peace that passes all understanding. Your peace that lays our head down to rest without worry. God, I just pray that you will envelop him in your peace today, God. And Nate, um, as I prayed for you, I... I got the the picture of an arrow going forward and hitting the mark. Okay? Keep your eyes fixed ahead. Look at the target. Okay? Look at the target. You're going to hit the target. And I got the word grace for you. So, Lord, I just pray grace right now. Lord, I just pray grace. You have so much grace for him. You have so much grace for all of us, Lord, when we make a mistake. You are there with your mercy and your grace, and we thank you for it. And, God, I just pray that you'll increase grace in him and through him, that it will, that it will be so evident. Jesus. Um, Nate, you've been on my mind and my heart a lot lately. Um, Congregation, just to clue you in, I feel as though Nate lost a lot in COVID. It was his junior and senior years of high school. He's a quarterback of his football team. Basketball team shortened to weeks. All sorts of losses that were on my heart and my mind at that time. And Nate, and God is restoring that. Nate, this is a verse that he gave to me when I was going through a hard season. Job 42.10, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friend. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Nate is coming off a huge win. Amen. Hallelujah, you guys. A huge win in golf and All-American. And um, I'm just, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for restoring Nate's losses. And we pray for continued, continued res restoration of these losses, Lord, as he follows his dreams. Lord, we pray for God-given dreams for him, for you to download into him and to guide his path and hold his hand as he walks through um, what you have for him. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm thankful for last week I got to teach on Samson and to the, uh, to the kids' church. And uh, here's one of the interesting things. The Spirit of God came upon him, but he was an anti-type. He wasn't something necessarily that we ought to follow, especially when he got involved with things that pleases himself. He would dive after things, and he would dive into women specifically. I mean, it was a big hold over his life. And tell me as men that that's not a big hold over many men's lives the Spirit of God was on him again and again and again. Tore apart lions. There was someone else, though, that the Spirit of God was upon, right? Descended like a dove at the day of baptism, and he was a type, someone that we follow. So I pray that the same powerful Spirit of God that was upon Samson, the thing that bulked him up, the thing that gave him that strength to tear pillars apart, is upon you guys. But even more so, that the same power of God, that Holy Spirit, that breath of God, that was upon Jesus, to give life to those that didn't have limbs, to take blind eyes and set them open and clear. You know and have heard of people in foreign countries that have cataracts that it's instantly healed. You know this. So go out and press your hands upon other people's eyes, and may they be healed. See, while the Spirit can come upon to tear apart a line, and you might need to in defense of your family, in defense of your friends, in defense of that girl that you're still hollering at, be like, hey! <laughs> you also have that same power of life. So here's the thing. For generations and centuries, there was a secret message. That secret message has been revealed. Paul declared it. Salvation is for the Jews and... The Gentiles. Well, historically, I'm not of Jewish heritage. I'm a Gentile. And so are most of the people here and most of the people you will meet. So declare to them their salvation. 
All of you, gentlemen, lady, go forth in the power of the Spirit. I got a word for you as scientists. May you be observant of God's kingdom here on earth, practically. The scripture and all the stuff that comes in there is not some just ethereal, shady, unknown thing. God's earth is evident in front of you. Observe it, see it, test it. Test him if you need, because he's always faithful to prove himself to you in every step you take. Whatever decision you got left, he's there. Oh, is he there? And you're going to feel sometimes he's not. I'm sorry when you do. I'm sorry when that comes upon. When you'll be like, I don't know about this. He's still there. When that faith begins to shake in those times, crack that scripture open because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the gospel. The good news that Christ is never going to leave you. Joshua 1.9, always going to be with you. Praise God for you. Thank you for observing his natural creation. Thank you for being a person who steps to your own drumbeat. That was awfully similar to that last message you had a couple weeks ago, right? Called out the drummer. Yeah, you're a drummer. I knew that. But it's an interesting thing. You're developing a walk, right? He makes all paths straight. So go and make it straight for others coming behind you, for the power of God is resting in you. You are God's living action. His power is through you. He works through you. He doesn't work in this um, mysterious way. He's going to call your heart to do things. And you're going to prepare a way for people. Thank you so much for serving the Lord with your heart. Hard times will come. They come to all. But you have the same promise to crack open that scripture. Thank you so much for your heart and service already. You are a willing heart. You're a person who says, no matter what, I'm I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm all in. You'll have opportunities to not be all in. You'll have opportunities to be slovened, lazy, to just chill around. And don't worry, you will take them sometimes. And you're going to pick yourself back up, strap up the boots, and receive God's glory upon you. And says, look, son, I forgive you in all things. I've forgiven you since before you were born. Don't you understand? I have a plan since the beginning. That's for you. So thank you so much for serving the Lord. I'm sorry about the hard times you'll have to come in as life continues. But I trust in his love for you. Thank you so much for your parents who've poured into you. Bro, you are blessed with heritage and generation there. Thank you so much. So men, as Samson did, go in God's strength. And as Samson didn't, for you men, man, pursue the Lord's will, not women. Let him bring them to you. Okay? It's a real thing. But if they encourage you to go to church, then go to church. Um, <laughs> amen. Logan. So I just want to give confirmation to Tom's word because I wrote on here, observer. And I don't know if you'll be a scientist, but I wrote on here, observer. And God knows what you'll be. And I wrote observer, didn't know what it meant. So I'm glad that Tom shared that word. And then he also confirmed another thing that God gave me on my way to church this morning. We were driving here, and there was a deer, and I slowed way down, and the deer just kind of waited for a second, and I thought, is this going to be one of those dumb deer that jumps into traffic, or is this going to be the smart deer that runs away and runs to safety? And God says to you, run for safety, always, okay? When you come at that point of decision, and you're like, frozen. God, which direction do I go? Always to him. Always to him. Always to safety. And so, Lord, I just thank you for Logan, and I thank you that he is an observer. And since Tom mentioned science, I just, it goes hand in hand with a deer for me, because science can bring confusion, right? So science is, is very, can be very worldly. And it can cause us to be confused. I'm speaking from experience as a nurse 
being confused sometimes in what I see in the natural versus what I know God can do in the spiritual. And God is saying to you, don't be confused. Run to me for safety every time. And those things that you observe, I observe them too. And I see what is on your heart, and I see what is in your mind. Be faithful. Be faithful in Jesus' name. Be faithful. Um, yeah, please. Hi. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to Logan, is it? Yeah. So I just looked at you when you were standing up here, and I saw, I saw, he sees things, I see details. He see, and then I, see, I had this little snippet of a picture. I saw you as a little boy, and I don't know if this happened or not, but I saw him just dawdling, but, and you'd see something, and you want to stop and inspect it. And you did not want to hurry up. You wanted, is, is that okay? Is that accurate? Is that, is that okay? <clears throat> So if God's giving me that picture and mom and dad are confirming it, then God's saying to you, Logan, I see you. I see you. I know you, and I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will lead you. I will guide you. Let him lead and guide. And I I just love the different, you're blessed. Thank you, Jesus, The, the different. Yeah, I'll go. Um, Nate, so as I was praying for you, I was like, oh, he's got so many gifts, and he's so talented and super special, and what really can I pray for Nate? But God took me to Matthew, and Jesus said that it's not by our gifts that we're known. It's by the fruit that comes from our gifts. And so you might be known as a musical, talented sports person, but God knows you as the fruit you produce from those gifts. And soon the congregation, your friends, um, who you go to college with, all those people are going to know you by the fruit that you produce. Okay? And so... I just want to, I thank you for Nate, and I thank you for all the gifts that you have given him, and I thank you that he uses them to serve you, and Lord, I just pray that the fruit will be evident, and the fruit will be big and beautiful, and there will be so much to harvest from it, God, and I just thank you for that, and I thank you for the future that you have for him, the the fruit that's going to be produced by all of his gifts, God, and many will come. I, I just see many coming Many will come when they see the fruit that you produce from your gifts. Many will come. So uh, I, this is, uh, this is a kind of a thing. Is, um, Luke, when, when you, uh, God kept speaking to me, seer, he sees, he sees, he sees observer he sees but i believe you see not you see things god he says he's speaking to us all the time he says he has precious thoughts how precious are your thoughts to me how great is the sum so this god this great god has thousands upon thousands of things to share with you not one two three four thousands upon thousands of things to share with you so I think you've all seen a movie more than once, right? Okay, and you saw something in the movie the second time you didn't see the first time, right? So I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, there's things he's spoken to you. You didn't get it all the first time. There's riches, there's riches, there's more to come, but there's riches in what he spoke to you. The seeds, like the seeds of what he's growing are already here. The seeds are there, and they're growing, but it doesn't yet appear exactly what it's going to be yet. You don't know exactly what all you're going to be, what you're going to be, what what you're, each one of you, what you're growing into. But the seed is there, and he's breathing on the seed. He, like Pastor Josh referred to earlier, the wind blows, and, and the Spirit of God is blowing things in. I'm just telling you, often this is a gentle breeze, often. 
yeah, there's tornadoes in the world, but mostly God's just speaking, and he's separating stuff, and he's, and he's if, you can, if, if you'll let him, he'll pull you in to a, to a narrative. You're being pulled into a story. He's written, Psalm 139 says, he's written your life. He knows what you're made for. He knows what's going to just burst, bring forth life in you. And he knows what the enemy's done to try and steal it from you, to rob it from you. Little lies that he's planted, the enemy's planted through your times of discouragement. What a great word Lindsay gave there to you. That's a, that's a model of a good word given that, that to you that was stolen, that something was stolen from you, this, this, these things are stolen from you, but God sees that thing, and he, God's like, no, we're not done. And the enemy's trying to say, you're done, you're done, but he's, he's saying, you're not done. No, you're not done. Man of God, man of God, man of God, woman of God, man of God, man of God. <laughs> right, so, so I, I just want to, uh, I want to just release that as a, uh, the daddy, a daddy in this house of pop, Papa, and break off these, I don't know, just discouragements and things. Like, because you guys are not, he says, unencumbered. He says, God says, unchained. God says you're free. The enemy's telling you something different. He's a liar. He's trying to steal something from you. God says, I got great, great things for you. So, Father, I bless them, each one of them individually. They carry their own blessing. Thank you for this moment in time in this church. Thank you, God, that, that this moment, this time, you're stirring gifts not just in them but in this room. Gifts are stirring all in this room. Gifts and callings. God, you're just like kind of slapping us in the spirit a bit and saying gently, saying, wake up, wake up. There's blessing in your life that you don't even know is there, but I'm watering it. I'm breathing on it. I'm calling it forth to life. I'm showing you things. I am your excitement. I am your joy. I am your thrill. That's what you're saying to all our hearts, to these hearts. And Father, I bless every blessing, every blessing word, every word that was a seed that's gone and every word that's yet to come. In this moment in time, I agree for them. And God, any word that was supposed to come that just is late or any one of those generational kinds of things, a generational hindrance, a generational blockage, discouragements from, the, from even people that loved us, God, I break those off. These men of God, this woman of God, this in this place, we release generational blessing in Jesus' name. It increases, it increases, it increases in Jesus' name, and it's for them. And you, God, when you say, you say, come up here, and I will show you great and mighty things. God, you are saying, I know you're saying to, to Luke and to Nate and to Jake and to Ella, and to Nathan, and to, was it Nolan? Logan, Logan. In Jesus' name, I, we bless them to come up here because you're this daddy, the, the great daddy that loves them, and you have much, much to share with them. You want to show them all kinds of things, so I bless that in Jesus' name. And rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardships, distress, pressure, trouble, produces patience, endurance, proven character, spiritual maturity, um, um, proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us. Um, because God's love has been abundantly poured out within your hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to you. Jesus name. Jesus name. Just to, just a, a reminder if you're you're here and you're hearing this and you're watching this God's favor, God's speaking favor and blessing and if you can hear it grab it because it's yours too. Amen. Um Katie has something and and 
I want to allow her that moment to, to share. Is it for Nate, you said? Because um, I should have invited her, honestly, to come up and pray because we invited leaders of you guys, and she is your leader, Nate, so I'd like to. She's your leader. <laughs> no, I just asked her if I could say something because I have had the, the blessing to, uh, of having Nate as a part of our worship team for the last couple of months. And when I was listening to Abby, what Abby had said about you was, I was praying for you this morning because I know that you'll be leaving us soon. I'm very, very sad about that. Um, but I've just been thinking about what I've observed in you over the, the past couple of months. And the things that I see in you are not so much that you can come in on a Sunday morning and be like, what songs are we doing? I'll see if I can get it. And then like rip it out. Great. But the things I see in you is that you come in and you take the time to, to visit with my children and that you, um, you take the time to have a conversation with me and the other kids on the, the people on the team. And I see the way that you interact with people in this, in this church. And I just, as I was thinking about that, I felt the Lord saying, that's what I see too. He sees that you are so talented, but he sees how you use those gifts and, and how you use those talents. And the verse that he gave for me, for you, which I think is already, I think you're already walking in it, but I just want to affirm it, that Micah 6, 8 says, he has shown you, oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? That you would do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. And that's what you're doing, but I just want to encourage you as you go forth from this place to keep walking in that. So thank you. We'll miss you. I'm sad. Um, Lindsay's got some gifts for you guys, and I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Tom. Okay. So good. Oh. So, let me just, uh, for those of you who don't know, in addition to leading uh, youth ministries overall, I also am the streaming guy. So, if you see me playing with my phone up here, I'm not tweeting, probably. I'm just, uh, I'm just playing with the live stream. Uh, to my uh, uh, live stream brethren and sistren out there, hello. It's fun to say hi to you, uh, not in text. Um, so if you are um, looking at the clock and are a little alarmed, please know that we knew this was going to happen, okay? <laughs> we, knew, we knew that, um, that making it a priority to uh, minister to each and every one of our graduates with all of you um, meant that this wasn't going to be kind of a typical, uh, typical Sunday in terms of the message. And so uh, what I'm going to do is ask uh, to shift to the uh, other computer back there, and then my job will be uh, to make sure that I can show you just a couple of slides. Yep, computer two, perfect. <clears throat> Okay, and now between these two, um, you're going to hit escape, so you're going to do this. Um, so I, I started last night with talking about the things that this is not going to be, because it is a message that's focused on youth. Um, it's not going to be a, um, it's not going to be bashing the youth. I wore a, purely by coincidence, I promised last night, I wore a uh, Statler and Waldorf shirt from the Muppets. Um, and what they're known for is making fun of people who are younger than them. They're, they're two older puppets, and they, uh, that's kind of their, their gag. Um, so it's not going to be that. And it's not going to be talking about uh, the problems with you guys because, um, because we love all of you. Um, um, what it's going to be is just talking about your role in uh, the lives of our youth and uh, their role in your life. Um, and it's going to be quick because, again, we knew this was coming. And F11. So um, now that we're now that we've gotten over what it's not, we'll we'll look at what it is. So this is Jesus' message to his disciples. There were a bunch of children whose parents wanted him to touch them, and the disciples tried to stop him because they were, you know, their their job. They viewed him as their leader. Their job was to keep him from being distracted. And he said, "This is not a, a distraction. This is what I'm about. Bring the children to me." Um, and the reason for that is that young people are important to God. And uh, we, know, we know this because people are important to God. 
So, uh, so the Bible says that, uh, that the reason that we were created is that God decided we are going to make mankind in our image. The image of God is one of love. So he is in perfect relationship in and among the parts of himself, um, but he had no vessel in which to impart that love and to receive that love uh, from. And so we are created as something, someone for God to love and to love God in turn. Um, my favorite example, there are a ton of young people in the Bible who are used powerfully by God, but I like to use Peter as my example. And the reason for that is not because he's chronologically young, but because he strikes me as somebody who was tremendously immature at the start of his ministry. He was on a fishing boat, and Jesus was like, you're coming with me to fish for men? And he was like, you bet, boss, and followed him. Um, but he kept making these mistakes that, that, uh, that sh demonstrated his, his immaturity, and some of them were good things. So like when he stepped out of that boat, it wasn't because he was this great guy who had such a deep knowledge of the Jewish scriptures. It was because he had absolute childlike faith in Jesus. But when he got distracted and stopped paying attention, he started to sink. So um, when, he, uh, when he told God, Jesus, there's no way that I'm going to deny you, and then he did it uh, three times before the cock crowed, that was a demonstration. He elevated his own abilities. How many of you remember being young and elevating your own abilities beyond what they actually were? I, I definitely do. So he is an example of age and immaturity not being a barrier to being powerfully used by God. Um, young people have unique gifts that God can use. There are a bunch of these, but I'm only going to give you a couple. If you want more, maybe we'll release this as a podcast later. But, um, but my, my favorite is that they are our first responders. We just did, uh, we just served as the host site for a, a ministry that goes, that invites first responders and administers to them and to their families to strengthen their relationship with God and with their, uh, with their spouses. But our, our students are our first responders and our missionaries into a group where a study that I read said that if you do not have a relationship with Jesus by the time you are 19, by the time you are 19 years old, there is only a 6% chance that you will develop a relationship with him afterward. If there were a people group out there where those numbers were there, that there's only a 6% chance of these people being saved, you can bet that there would be missionaries lining up to bring the love of God to those people. We have those missionaries, and they are our students. They live among that group all the time, and, uh, and they are our easiest way to reach. Guess what? I'm, I'm the overall overseer of youth in, in this body. I am one of the primary teen group leaders, so I'm with them every Monday. I am not the best person to, to, uh, to preach to or to introduce God to a student that I don't know. Your students are. Our students who are in this body are the ones who already have the, the peer relationship and the friendship with those folks and can minister to them. Will I if they come here? Absolutely I will. Will I develop a friendship with them? Absolutely I will. Will I be as effective as our students can be in that context? I won't. I will be as effective as I can be here and downstairs in the youth room, but it is up to our students to reach uh, their friends and their, uh, and their loved ones. Um, the comparison between the strength of young people and old people, I'm not going to get very much into. Um, the glory of young men is in their strength, and the splendor of old men is, is gray hair or little hair, in my case. And our, our uh, uh, in the la I'm just going to read this outright. Um, It'll be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all humanity, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. The comparison um, in between the, the strengths of older people and the strength of younger people, we need both sides. We need the enthusiasm and the excitement and the charging full speed ahead, and we also need the patience and the, and the thinking and the wisdom that comes with our older folks. And when we, when we combine those gifts inside this body, that's when, that's when we really start to synergize. We know that God is the one who does the work that we do here. We absolutely know that. But we also know that we are the willing vessels that he can use, and our, and our abilities and the giftings that he has for that are a tremendous part of that. Um, young people are also ideal candidates for discipleship. We are all called, the Great Commission calls us all to make disciples of all nations. And uh, part of making disciples is that one person is discipling and one person is being discipled. Um, there are benefits to both sides in that. Um, 
And there's a risk if we do it improperly. If we're not careful in the way that we're discipling our young people, if we're very much being a do as I say and not as I do, or do as I say on Sunday morning when I'm standing in front of everybody, but not as I do when you run into me uh, out, out in town and I'm cheering against a baseball team. Um, those, uh, that's, that's the danger that we have and the responsibility that we have as disciplers. So what is our collective godly responsibility to our young people? Um, the primary one is this, uh, to provide a safe and supportive environment for our young people, both chronologically, like the ones that you saw standing here and the ones even younger than them, and also by way of maturity, um, and provide an environment for them to explore and develop their faith. We have a child protection policy that we take very seriously. It's, a, it's an insurance requirement, but we also view it as a mandate that God puts on us to keep those kids safe. We are building an environment here where there is as little a chance as possible for anyone to get hurt as possible. Uh, I just said possible twice, but I'm going to move past it. Um, our goal is not for anybody to get hurt here. And so primarily, uh, the least, the most vulnerable among us are the ones that we want to do that the most for. Um, so what the, the other thing that we do is find practical ways to involve our young people with ministry and leadership. There is a reason that we devoted the lion's share of this morning to watching uh, and taking part in corporately speaking into the lives of young people who are leaving this body probably and moving on to other things. Some of them will stay, some of them will move to other churches, but we want you to know, we want them to know, and we want all of the students coming up behind them to know that we view their moving on beyond this body as something that is important. We are behind them, we are continuing to pray, and we believe that God has a path for them, and God has tremendous things for them to do. Um, so some of those things you saw with them helping out with worship, some of those things you're going to see, because after, uh, after I am through speaking, um, we are going to invite our youth forward to minister to anyone who has anything going on healing-wise in their body, anyone who is praying for one of their children who, uh, who maybe is not following God right now. We are absolutely going to pray for that. Um, so I'm going to leave you with this scripture, which is... Uh, um, God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still proclaim your wonderful works. Even when I am old and gray, God, do not abandon me. Then I will proclaim your power to another generation, your strength to all who are to come. So this, these two verses are a picture of the trajectory of a person living life in God's will. You start out, and you need to be ministered to by those above you. you need, uh, it says, God, you taught me, and God really... Uh, does the impartation, but he does it through other people, typically. Um, and then we turn around at the end, and we realize it's our responsibility to do that impartation for that next generation coming up. But tonight, or today, sorry, I'm still locked in last night's service. Today, we're going to reverse that a little bit, and we're going to allow our students here to minister into your, your lives. So, um, so I really appreciate all of you being a part of the impartation today. And one last thing I almost forgot to say is that if you felt like you had some message for one or all of those students who are standing here, please write it down. Um, get it into my hands. You can uh, email me at tom at myacf.org or uh, you can reach the office through office at myacf.org. But we really want to get those words from God through you into their hands. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is uh, I'm going to kind of close this in prayer. You can join, uh, you can come up to the front if you want prayer for anything. Um, our, our students are going to, I haven't talked to anybody in particular, but I know they're going to join me. Um, and we're going we're gonna to minister to this body uh, from our young people. So, Father God, I just thank you for your vision of each of us as a complete person. We're not, we're, not a, we're not an infant, we're not an adult, we're not an old person, but we are that complete person. You know us perfectly at every stage of our lives, and we know that you have a purpose and a plan for each of us at every stage of our lives. So I thank you once again for our graduates who are heading out. I pray for, uh, for you to just lead them in the path that they will take. And I just ask, as our, as our young people come forward to impart, that you will work through them and that, uh, and that their, their ministry into this body will just, uh, will just magnify you in a major way. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please come forward if you would like prayer. Thanks, everybody.